Hey everyone and welcome back to another versus matchup video. Today we have Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender versus Shigeo Kageyama, also or better known as Mob from Mob Psycho 100. If you enjoy this video, dislike and subscribe. And massive shout out to the boss of random who's collabing with me for this video. And he's also provided me with some Avatar clips too because the last Avatar video I made got struck down for copyright. So, you know, I, I needed to be safe and I asked him and he said it was okay. So... Uh, there will be primarily Zuko clips, but there will be a few ones of Aang, so uh, it will just be background stuff, so it doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into this video. Hey, 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 it's me again. You know me, always doing the, the Avatar thing, you know, yeah. Uh, it's not an anime, not an anime. Call me a weeb again, I'll break your neck. But anyway, uh, let's talk about Avatar Aang. So, uh, his strength slash attack potency uh, in his base form, you know, without the Avatar state or anything, he was actually able to harm and even beat Izuk, uh, Zuko. Well, when he did beat Zuko, it was in the very early stages of Zuko. And not really after he found out the way of bending, because then after he found the original way of bending, then Zuko was like, hey, guess what? I'm good now, yay, we're all friends. And uh, But he could take hits from Azula, which is about 13 tons of TNT, which means it puts him on, on about the same uh, playing field. Uh, could partially block combustion demand explosions, which have been shown in the show to be about large building level as Combustion Man. Well, his name is Combustion Man. Do I really have to explain that? <laughs> uh, in the beginning of the show, I think it's season one, he is comparable to King Boomy because he ends up fighting him in the show. And King Boomy, at towards the end of the show, which we could put him on the same level because he didn't really go through any significant character growth. He was always his King Boomy from start to finish of the show. Uh, King Boomy was able to move a statue weighing approximately 125 tons. Uh, the statue was huge, and I believe it was one of King Ozai, and he moved it to save the uh, village of Amashu. And then, obviously, the most notable in the Avatar state, he has access to all of the previous Avatar's uh, powers. So, you know, Avatar Kyoshi, Avatar Roku, uh, and then even Korea, who could vaporize a portion of a mountain. Uh, I believe Kiyoshi also sliced an island in two, Kara could throw large ma uh, land masses, uh, Roku, and also, Av or not Avatar, but Fire Lord Sozin uh, helped to stop a volcano, which puts it about uh, low ball him, it's about island level, high ball him, it's about continental. It really kind of goes back and forth because you know that he can because his bending is just you know his bending is just the elements and you know he can do it and then the show it shows that the other avatars have done it but it never really shows the extent of which they could go i mean because they do it pretty much effortlessly i think only king boomy was the one showing strain when he did that much but he's not an avatar and we've seen all the other avatars do it pretty effortlessly, except I would say for Roku when he was doing the volcano, but that's also because of the uh, stuff in the air and everything. Which I guess kind of doesn't make sense because he was an airbender, wouldn't he just be able to, you know, just throw that away, but whatever. For Shigeo, um, it's harder to, or at least people really underestimate him because he's never shown something that's at the level that um, he's been calculated at, which I'll go into when we talk about his 100% and question mark, question mark, question mark percent form, which I'm just going to refer to as the unknown percent form for now because I don't want to have to say that every single time. Uh, but in base, um, we should be comparable to Teruki and Ryo. Uh, I say that because, you know, Teruki and Ryo in their fight were destroying large buildings around them to the point where the entire street was just a complete mess, like it was complete crumbled to the ground. And then um, Ryo act activates his mind's eye ability and just slaps up Teruki, Ritsu and everyone else in the 7th division, which are all powerful psychics. And yeah, after all that, you know, he's going on about, oh, you can't defeat me, you know, blah blah blah, villain spiel. And then... And then Mob comes along. All he's doing is just walking, right? He's just walking towards Rio. And Rio is scared senseless just by him walking towards him. Which would easily put him above Taruki and Rio, which would put him bare minimum multiple building to build uh, to city to city block level. Which would mean that base Sh um, Shigeo is above base Ang. However, uh, when it comes to his 100 percent form. Uh, he was able to create a storm that was able to span over several cities and this calculates out to 38 gigatons of TNT which is enough to destroy a large island which obviously puts him on par with Avatar Aang as well. 
Um, the uh, Exertia is, though, with his unknown percent form, his power is multiplied by an unknown amount. Uh, we know that he must be above 1000% Regan, as, you know, that was, that's, t that's 10 times Mob's power. So, we, we know it's at least 10 times higher. Um, but it is really kind of unknown, besides the fact that he's been able to slap around people who are equal to, and even able to overpower his 100% form, so... You could make a high ball case for him to be continental, but it is kind of a stretch. So, uh, for who I guess the strength and attack potency point, it is really annoying because it comes down to uh, definition. Because large landmass could mean anything between island and continental, as we said. And if you go with the continental meaning, uh, Ang is above Shigeo. And if you go with island meaning, Shigeo is above Ang. So, I'm just going to call it simplest for simplicity's sake a draw. You also have to take into consideration that, you know, slicing an island in half and moving them are different to completely destroying them. However, you know, as I said, it's going to be a draw for now. Um, in speed feats, he should be comparable to Zuko, who could redirect lightning, which is about 270,000 miles per hour at least. Uh, although if he did take the hit from Azula with uh, lightning, he probably wouldn't have been able to at least avoid it because he doesn't know the technique to redirect it but he could probably have been able to avoid it if not he was blindsided by azulo uh the avatar avatar state ang is much much faster though uh because it's every avatar <laughs> shigeo meanwhile like, it, like there's not really that many speed feats within mob psycho besides rio being able to dodge bullets with his eyes closed like effortlessly, effortlessly which would put him around 1800 miles per hour and of course uh, Shigeo should bear minimum scale to that in base and at 100% uh, he was able to travel 20 kilometers in an instant which puts him around 4400 miles per hour and even if the unknown percent form was 100 times faster which would put him above the to um, the Ang's lightning speed feat uh, for one, Avatar State Ang is much faster as well, and two, we could probably argue Ang to be even faster than the Lightning Bolt itself, considering, you know, distance between him dodging it and things like that. So, yeah, the speed point definitely goes to Ang in this section. Durability, again, is another weird one, because we don't really see anything like that happening. Like, he mainly just blocks attacks a lot of the time, but uh, he should be comparable to Zuko, who could take Lightning. Uh, he himself also took lightning, but the only reason he really survived that was because Katara's healing water. Uh, I'm pretty sure he would have died if he did, and then that would have cut off the Avatar state, and then it would have been open to Avatar's being born. Uh, but he should be a I mean, he did kind of take it, I guess. Uh, so water shields have building level dur durability, earth shields have large building level durability, or even city block level durability, because they could take hits from Ozai, who is obviously superior to Zuko and Azula, and he was also under Sozin's Comet, and he was just like, literally, I think the uh, fire was taking up a portion of a large column of rock, which is about like, I think it might have been like 40, 50 meters, something like that, and it covered about 20 meters of it, and that's a lot of fire, and it was, you could see if it was melting the rock, which to melt rock already, it has to be pretty hot, so. Uh, it's about then, or the durability for it is about there. For durability, Shigeo has been able to take hits from the likes of Teruki. Um, and well, like, he wasn't even fighting back whatsoever, and Teruki was going full on all out trying to kill him, and he was just completely fine, um, which should bare minimum put him for his durability around large building level, but, you know, again, there's not really much shown for his base. Um, in his 100% form, he was able to take hits from beings and people who were equal to, or at least able to contend with 100% uh, mob, which is characters like Toriko, who, you know, as, as, as was seen in the background footage, was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And in his, question, in his unknown percent form, I, I, okay, I'm just going to set this up a little bit, right? So, Toy, Toykro's son... Um, show is that I was able to charge up energy for long periods of time and obviously the longer Char is able to charge up you know the more powerful it gets and he and his father both hit um, uh, Shigeo at the same time when he was in his unknown percent form and it did practically no damage which easily puts him above island level and you could possibly make the argument for continental too so yeah, Mob is definitely much more durable than Ang. So for abilities, weapons, techniques, and stuff, 
Uh, obviously, his favorite is the uh, Glider Staff. Uh, he's a skilled acrobat. Acrobat. He is an Airbender, Waterbender, Earthbender. Uh, he could even, mm, well, he could kind of metal that. I would assume Toph would show him. I've never seen Legend of Korra, so I don't know if that's canon or not. But I, I would assume Toph would show him. Uh, Fire Bend. I know he could Lightning Bend though. Uh, that's been shown after that uh, Iro teaches him. Uh, but if you can do the Avatar State too, he could heal from water bending, uh, his energy bending, which can manipulate life energy, which basically means he could do whatever he really wants with you, uh, which is demonstrated, I think, for the only time, because like I said, I never watched Legend of Korra, when he takes away Fire Lord Ozai's uh, bending, which is actually really overpowered. He just take, he doesn't take someone's life, but he just takes away someone's power and. They can't do anything about it. Uh, it is a little iffy on whether he could use it for other people because it said as long as their willpower is over there. But then I guess he did beat Ozai, which was a like madman obsessed with destroying everything. So I guess that's pretty much as far as it goes. But it uh, it's really tricky to really determine, I guess, like how well he could use it. He has resistance to bloodbending. I don't know how true this is. I just see it in the notes. Uh, I haven't really seen it like him having resistance to it because uh, the girl literally almost kills Sokka or no she almost kills Aang when she's bloodbending him and there she's bloodbending both of them so I haven't really seen that uh, it says in the avatar state I guess he so I guess he maybe could but it uh, hasn't been shown uh, astral projection we was able to travel to the spirit world stuff like that and then when he's in the avatar state he has the whole knowledge of the previous avatars which is literally like centuries of knowledge because it's literally one born after another, and I think there's like a hundred something avatars in canon, so it's literally centuries of avatars. Mob's main power, for lack of a better term, is telekinesis and being psychic, as you could also probably tell from the background footage. Uh, he's able to um, make shields as well, from so he can protect himself from being hit, although even then he is quite durable himself, as we've already kind of shown. Um, he's also been able to make plants grow, which is a really odd ability that just kind of comes out of nowhere, but, you know, whatever, it works. Um, and that's mostly it. I mean, like, he can channel his psychic energy into his punches and things like that to make them more powerful. However, um, you know, it's he's mostly just abu abusing his psychic powers to make him do everything from flight to um, beating the absolute crap out of any of his enemies. So, um... Yeah, it's definitely safe to say that Aang is much more versatile than Shigeo. The issue is though, the things that Aang has, um, Shigeo has already dealt with before or can do himself to a degree. For example, he was completely unaffected by getting hit by lightning and walking through fire. And in his fight with Toikuro, he was able to manipulate the water around him as, as well. Not only that, but you know, with earth bending and being psychic, you know, you'd imagine he'd be able to pick up and throw buildings like he has done in several of his fights, which means that earth bending doesn't wouldn't seem to be too out of his range. Air bending is the only thing he hasn't really come up against before, but considering he's come up against people who could literally manipulate gravity to make it much worse to to be in, uh, I could I could imagine it wouldn't be that much of an issue for him. Uh, he can also, another thing I, brought, I forgot to bring up, he can turn himself into a spirit and possess his enemies from the inside and kill them within there. And now there are two main arguments whether he'd be able to do it for Aang, you know, for and against. The for is that he was able to do this to a guy that was not only able to equal 100% um, um, mob, but was ultimately able to overpower him. And he's the only villain so far to force uh, Shigeo to go from 100% to his unknown form. Usually, it's always just been one or the other. Um, so, uh, however, the argument against this happening is that, you know, Aang has several thousand spirits within him that are all equally really powerful. So, you know, whether that happens or not is... I, I don't think it would possibly happen, but, you know, the, the, you can see an argument for and against it. And in his uh, unknown percent form, he can absorb energy. Not just psychic energy from people around him, but from pretty much everything he can just absorb energy from. And he does this mostly just to protect himself, but he can also just make everyone else weaker. Which essentially is um, a slightly weaker version of what Aang can do with um, his energy or in life manipulation. But it essentially it just means that if Aang were trying to do that, then Shigeo would just do the same thing and just get it back. So yeah, it kind of cancels it out. 
Um, I believe that um, Shigeo has the more powerful abilities, but I think it's pretty set in stone that Aang is much more versatile. So, yeah, I would say that uh, Mob has the better abilities, but, but Aang is much more versatile. Uh, weaknesses, he has not fully mastered metal bending. Uh, he needs water and earth to bend water and earth. Uh, well, it's pretty obvious, you know. And then he's a pacifist by nature, but whenever he's in the Avatar state, he will kill you. <laughs> he will kill you, trust me. He does not care. Well, then again, I guess technically it's not him, so I guess they don't care, but, you know, you're gonna die either way. Meanwhile, for Shigeo, it's mostly the same story. He is also a pacifist by nature, but I think we're gonna ignore that, considering we're gonna have to make these two fight, and if they were in character, they just would not. Uh, in his unknown percent form, he essentially falls unconscious, which makes him absolutely bloodlusted. Which, while you know it makes him completely unrestrained, he can't really think up of a strategy mid fight. And, well, he's, not, he's never really needed to because of how damn powerful it is in his own verse. Another thing to bring up is that his stamina is absolutely terrible. Um, uh, the good thing for him, though, is that his psychic powers don't affect his stamina whatsoever, so he can make himself fly around as fast as he wants and make himself run as fast as he wants, but he'll he'll be completely fine. Just as long as there isn't a cross-country race, he, he, I guess, Aang, he, he, sh he should be fine. So for who has the worst weakness, I think it's safe to say that it is uh, Mob. However, it is not that exploitable unless... Oh, well, actually, no, it is quite exploitable considering uh, how much smarter Aang is in the Avatar state to Shigeo just in general. So, yeah, this point goes to uh, Aang for having the, le the least vulnerable weakness. As for the victor, this is a really close fight. As we know, their strength and attack potency is equal. Aang is faster, more versatile, and has the least vulnerable weakness. Meanwhile, Shigeo is much more durable and has the better abilities. So, who wins the fight? Right, so... I could obviously very easily see a case for both of them winning, however, who wins more often than not, I would probably have to say it's Shigeo Kageyama, for the sole reason of Aang's durability doesn't increase, or at least doesn't increase that much in the Avatar state, which is a real detriment to him because if he even takes a hit from 100% Shigeo, let alone uh, unknown um, perform percent Shigeo, then he is most likely dead. Um, the issue is though, hitting Aang. Um, as we know, he is much faster. However, Shigeo has been known to hold his opponents in place, and not only that, but torture them too. Like, he's known to twist limbs and things like that just by holding them in place. So, um, even if, you know, it takes him to transform into his unknown percent form to catch him, that would be enough to end the fight. Um, Aang could win by outsmarting unknown percent uh, Shigeo quite easily, and because he's that much faster, he could make a trap or something with, and then use his power to completely knock Shigeo out and down, and then just finish him off from there. However, I believe more often than not that Mob would win the fight. Uh, if you disagree in the comments, let me know why, and you know, tell me your counterpoints and counter arguments. Um, another thing to bring up as well, if Shigeo were to try and possess Aang, as we already covered, that probably wouldn't work. And if he tries it, which he's only ever had to try it once, and it was a last ditch effort, but if he were to try it and fail, then he loses because he can't. Or he'd have to return to his body fast, fast, fast enough so that Aang wouldn't be able to destroy it. Because if he destroys it, then he's dead. So, yeah. Um, regardless of that, I would still have to say that yeah, Mob wins more often than not. I'm not saying that Aang has absolutely no chance of winning.